If you're a pre-med, this is exactly how you can use ChatGPT to get into medical school. In November 2022, the world completely changed as we know it. That's when OpenAI introduced ChatGPT. And since then, it's done a lot of stuff, including even passing the medical examination and even the bar exam. But the question today is, is it going to be able to help you get into medical school? So today, I want to talk to you about whether or not it can help you with your applications, whether or not it can help you with situational judgment tests, such as the Casper test and AMC preview, whether or not it can help you with the MCAT, and whether or not it can help you with the interviews and finally whether or not it can even help you provide the best letters of recommendations now if you have never watched any of my videos my name is Beruz Momeni I'm the CRM founder here at BMO we have helped over 50,000 other applicants get accepted so we have a lot of experience with the admissions process and I want to share what I think chat GPT can do for you now a little bit of a disclaimer I am not telling you how you could cheat your way into medical school. Today, my goal is to teach you how to become more efficient in order for you to transfer the knowledge and the qualities you already possess into written material or into practice for your MCAT, Casper, interviews, etc. very efficiently rather than trying to cheat your way into medical school. So let's go through this process one by one. How can you use chat gpt in your medical school admissions process i like to start first with the applications so here is how to create the perfect application personal statements list of activities and secondary essays for medical school using chat gpt for personal statements what you can do is you can provide chat gpt with the exact instructions that's been provided to you including the character and the word limit that's provided to you then explain how many paragraphs you like to include what experiences you like to include how you want the tone and grammar and spelling to be like and then allow it to give you a rough draft now again you can, i'm not telling you to actually use that personal statement but that will be a good starting point for you it's going to save you a lot of time so now you have a rough draft because that's the part that takes the most amount of time you have a rough draft to review and try to turn that into your own words using a, you know the way you normally write and try to make sure that the experiences flow properly and uh, paragraph to paragraph there is great transition then finalize it that's going to save you a lot of time for secondary essays, if you want to use ChatGPT, the best way to do that is actually twofold. One is sometimes uh, students struggle with secondary essays not knowing exactly what to write because they don't even understand what the question is asking. So one of the basic things you could do, take your prompt, put it into ChatGPT, ask it to explain what this question is asking. Second thing you could do is, similar to your personal statement, you could uh, explain the character limit, the word limit, provide the full instructions, and then ask it to write you a rough draft based on specific unique experiences you have and the tone and language you want to be used. Again, that's gonna be a first draft. That's not gonna be your final one. I'm not suggesting you, you submit that, but that's gonna save you a lot of time. Then you're gonna have your first draft, start working on it and polish it, make it your own. Then you're gonna be able to uh, submit your secondary essays much faster that way, and it's still gonna be your own work. Next for your applications, uh, for your medical school applications, is a list of activities, whether it's the AMCAS or the OMSAS or the top five experiences you, uh, you're essentially explaining. You could use ChatGPT again to provide you with a very brief descriptions for activities. You may be struggling with coming up with descriptions that match the character or word limit because these types of activities normally have a very uh, brief uh, requirement. You cannot write paragraphs. And students really struggle becoming concise. So you could provide your descriptions, put it into chat, chat GPT, explain the limits, and it will turn it back. Your own words it will turn it back into something that meets the character limits so that it's more concise and it fits in. Uh, within the application requirements. The other thing you could do, you could toss all your sort of activities and ask it to uh, make the entire list for you such that it fits the character limits 
and such that it's provided in a chronological order. So that's how you could use it. Again, make sure you use your own words when you send it before you uh, submit the final application. Now, here's how to use ChatGPT to ace the Casper test and AMC preview. Again, I don't think you should do this during the actual exam and make sure you understand the policies in place, but you can certainly use ChatGPT to help you prepare while you're doing your preparations. So how can you do that? First, you could ask it to provide you with sample questions that are uh, essentially helping you uh, figure out the different types of questions you're going to find on Casper and AMC preview and similar situational judgment tests. The idea is you have now another source that's going to provide you with sample questions so you can work through sample questions and keep getting better. Now, the other thing you could do is once you feel comfortable, you could ask it to create a full length test. This way you will take the test and then you'll do it uh, and treat it like a time test. Of course, I uh, highly recommend that you actually do this using a realistic simulation. That's something ChatGPT cannot do for you. So that's a limitation, but it's a good start for you to start preparing for the Casper test and the AMC preview. The other uh, alternative is, let's say you have now gotten access to full length, realistic, uh, practice Casper and AMC preview tests, uh, for example, such as the ones we have at BMO. Now you're reviewing those and you get stuck. That's when you could again have ChatGPT open. So you could go into ask questions. You say, what's the best answer to this? And compare it to what you were going to say. The uh, advantage is you may find certain strategies used by ChatGPT that's going to help you figure out your own strategy and make you faster at, as, at responding. Because one of the major problems with Casper and AMC preview is people normally run out of time because they cannot think on their on the spot and on their feet right away and get the right answer. So this is going to really help you out. So how can you do that if you're writing an actual full length practice test? That's essentially, let's say it's, it's a video scenario, right? How can you translate that quickly before the time runs out? For example, in the case of Casper. Well, you could have something uh, that's uh, more like a voice recording software. There is free ones such as speech text there, open in the background. So it's now listening to the scenario. It's gonna turn into text. Once it's turned into text, quickly you copy and paste into chat GPT with the questions, see what the answers are, compare with your own, and then of course, provide your own answer in your own words uh, in a concise fashion. The other thing you could do if it's a text-based scenario, you could have a text recognition software running in the background that's seeing your uh, the text on the actual uh, or the practice test that you're running. Then it could translate that immediately into text that you could copy and paste into ChatGPT. Again, that's the best way for you to get an idea of what would be the right answer if you know I get stuck. However, again, I recommend you don't actually do that on the actual test because that may be against their policies. So I encourage you to only use these things for practice. Here is how you can use ChatGPT to ace the MCAT. This is best again used during your practice exams. Don't do it during the actual test. This may get you disqualified. You're probably not even gonna be able to do that anyways in a testing center, but it's great for practice. Well, first thing is can help you generate any type of question you like. So you can ask it to generate for example, let's say you're having difficulties with the common physics equations. You could ask, give the equation and ask it to give you some sample questions. And then if you get stuck, you could ask it to give you some sample, uh, the, the correct answers and the explanations. The other thing you could do is, let's say you have, you're practicing with a practice exam and you even have the answer, but you don't understand exactly how the answer was uh, you know, uh, provided or how you could do that on your own if you had a different question. So you could ask ChatGPT to provide an explanation of going from, you know, uh, figuring out what the question is to the right answer. So that it, instead of just telling you what the right answer is, that's one way to use it. If you don't have the answer key, you could ask it to give you the right answer. The other way is to uh, ask it to explain how it comes up with the right answer. Remember, ChatGPT, you could use it for anything you want as long as you provide uh, very uh, clear instructions and make corrections as it makes mistakes. The other thing you could uh, do is ask it to create a personalized study schedule for you. So you could assume 
that you need two to three hundred hours of studying. Then you provide the the, the fact that you need three hundred hours of uh, studying for the MCAT. You provide your exam date. You provide today's date so that there is X number of days you have to study. Then you could explain that you like to study X number of days per week and you like to study, let's say, in the morning, in the afternoon or in the evening. Obviously, I suggest in the morning when you're fresh as soon as you wake up. Then based on all these criteria, you say, create me a, uh, and you could even say, you know what, Sundays I want to take off. Create me a day-by-day schedule for the MCAT based on the criteria I gave you for each section of the MCAT. And there you go, you're going to get your personalized MCAT study schedule. Let's move on to interviews and here's how you can use ChatGPT to get ready for your medical school interviews. First thing is you could uh, ask it to create sample questions based on your interview format. If it's an MI question, you could ask it to give you X number of MI questions. If it's a panel, it's a traditional, whatever it is, you could ask it to give you sample questions that you could practice with. If you have a challenging question, you could ask it to provide a, an explanation of how it would go about providing a perfect answer to that question. So that's another way to get hints on and developing strategies while, while uh, you're actually practicing for your medical school interview. You could provide a difficult question. Then you could actually provide your answer. Then you could ask ChatGPT to explain whether or not your answer is the best or rank it on a scale of, I don't know, one to seven, one to five. Obviously one to seven is the best scale. And it will again uh, help you by providing you feedback on your uh, interview uh, skills. Next thing you could do with ChatGPT regarding medical school interviews is to ask it to provide a full length interview set of questions. You have to provide the exact format of the interview, MMI, uh, panel traditional. You have to explain that this is for medical school interviews. You have to explain how much time you're going to have for each uh, question, for example, and how many questions you want. And then it will, it will give you the full list so you could start practicing for your interview. I have to explain for interviews because you're interacting with chat GPT, which is, you know, an unsupervised, uh, it's not supervised in real time. So there's no way to know if the things that it's providing is correct or not. You still need to do realistic mock interviews followed by expert feedback. And when I say expert feedback, someone being there done that and not your family and friends. So they don't hold back when they're giving you feedback. Lastly, the question becomes, how do we use ChatGPT to provide you with perfect letters of recommendation? Can you do that? Actually, you can. So a lot of times, when you go and ask for a letter of recommendation for your medical school application, the person you ask sometimes says, hey, you know what? This sounds great. I really want to support you. But you go ahead first, write the first draft of what you think I should write, send it to me, I'll finalize it and submit. If that happens, you could chat, use ChatGPT to come up with a perfect letter of recommendation. Here's how. You're going to go find the exact instructions provided by the medical schools you're applying to. Get the instruction, provide the instruction exactly as is. Then ask ChatGPT to write you a sample letter of recommendation by explaining who is writing it, how long they have known you, how they have known you, what type of experiences you want to include, and how you want uh, ChatGPT to explain how your involvement and experience in this activity where this person was supervising you uh, at essentially relates to the core competencies that are available and, and you're aware of. And I'm talking about the AMC core competencies or the CAN METS frameworks, etc. Depending where you are, you have uh, where you're applying, you need to know what the core competencies are for the regulatory body of physicians. Again, when you take that, you change it into your own words, then you're going to quickly be able to send this to your referee who's going to write it for you. It's going to save you a lot of time. And I want to reiterate, the point was not for you to find a way to cheat your way because you're going to be caught, but there is definitely a way to save you time. And as technology becomes available, they're meant to save you time, not to destroy creativity, etc. because then everybody will get into medical school, right? So use it. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and share it with a friend who may enjoy it as well. Subscribe to whatever social media channel you're watching this so you don't miss my next video and I'll talk to you soon.